All right, joining us now, we've got defensive coordinator Pete Kwiatkowski and safety Buda Baker. Uh, and we'll start with some opening statements. Coach, if you can just uh, open us up with kind of comments on how bowl week experience has gone for you so far and, and preparations leading into the game. Yeah, we're, well, I know uh, me and the staff and all these guys are excited to be here, and it's a great opportunity, and bowl week's been going great. Uh, practice has been awesome. Uh, good energy and guys chomping at the bit to go out there and, um, you know, compete. All right, Buda, I'll ask you about uh, what did you think of your experience at the Martin Luther King Center last night? Uh, um, for me, it was a great experience to even be in the same company as people that who were friends with Martin Luther King and all that type of stuff. So, I mean, it was great to, to hear their stories and all the stuff that they said. All right, thanks for that. Okay, raise your hand, we'll get you a microphone. Please give us your name and affiliation and to whom you're addressing your question, and we'll go ahead and open it up. All right, back up here in the middle left, please. Lindsay Schnell, Sports Illustrated. Um, for both of you, Taylor Rapp has had an incredible freshman season. Why do you think that is, and did it surprise you guys that he was able to do everything he could? Um, Taylor, w w coming out of high school, Taylor was a, was a guy that played on a team that didn't have a great record, but did everything for him. So he, played, he ran the ball, he played quarterback, played DB, played linebacker. He was, um, so you were able to see what he was able to do athletically. And so he graduated early and was able to come in and hit the ground running in spring ball. And you could see what he could do as a, um, as a football player. And then for young guys coming in, it's the, the big, the big uh, learning curve is always how they're gonna handle the, the change of intensity, um, all of the, the defensive um, terminology and stuff they have to, to learn, and then, then they have school. And so he was able to handle all that great, so we got a trial run with him through spring ball, and then he had a great summer. Came in in the fall and just kept, kept getting better and better and better, and he got more opportunities, and he made the most of those opportunities, and he is where he is now. And so to answer the question, um, looking back on it, no. Um, just the way he handled himself through all that, that, whole, that whole growth process and learning process of, uh, of, of this year. Uh, for me, I'm no either. Um, I'm from Seattle, Washington as well, and we don't really know a lot about Belling Bellingham, Washington. That's where Taylor Rapp's from. So we saw this freshman, he came in while we were doing our, uh, our player practices big already, like 200 pounds, like six feet. Um, doing the DB drills, he looked flawless. He looked like one of us the first time he came out there. So for me, I was like, okay, like this guy's good. He's, he's gonna play. Um, he, you know, takes in and, and instructive criticism and all that type of stuff. And so, you know, when I saw that, I knew that he was gonna play. All right, right here, Barrett. Barrett Salih, Bleacher Report. This is for Buddha. Uh, a couple days ago, Nick Saban said that your secondary was very Seattle Seahawk-like. What, what are your thoughts on that comment, and do you compare yourself to the Seahawks? I mean, that's cool. <laughs> uh, we don't really, you know, think of any... We watch NFL defenses and all that type of stuff, and, you know, Seahawk defense is a great defense, but uh, we, feel, we feel like we're, we're Washington defense-like, so... Next question, please. Raise your hand. We'll get you a microphone. Anybody in the back? All right. How about right here in the front, please? Kate Harrison, Pac-12. Buddha, just your comments on being here after the season that you guys have had a big championship game in Pac-12 too, and just uh, just the feeling around this week and what it's like here in Atlanta for you guys. For us, it's, it's a great opportunity. Um, you know, we're glad we, we got accepted to be in this college football playoff, and you know, we're here to win. So for us, we're just all Alabama, no social media, just all thinking about Alabama. Okay, back over here in the aisle. Thanks, Haley Hartung from ESPN. For both of you, who do you put in the category of the best quarterbacks you've faced this season, and where does Jalen Hurts fall among them, and what have you seen from him? Um, 
well, he's 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 up there at the top. Um, just anybody anybody that plays quarterback for a team that's gone 13 and 0 and has has been as um, dominant as Alabama has been all year is um, is a very good player. And so, you know, looking back on the season, you know, our, our only blemish is SC, and Sam um, did a really good job of keeping plays alive and was accurate with the ball, uh, and um, you know. Didn't 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 make make a lot of mistakes that a freshman would make, and so um, I would say probably yeah, Sam Donald. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with coach as well. Sam Donald's great quarterback. You know, watching film, we knew he was going to be a problem. He can run, he can throw beautiful balls. Same thing with uh, Alabama's quarterback. Uh, he can throw when he's when he's on it. Uh, he can definitely run, so he's definitely in our, you know, defensive package. Buddha, what's your favorite Taylor Rapp interception this year? Which one do you think was the most impressive? Uh, Does it, like, kill you that a freshman is uh, <laughs> has the most as a veteran? Uh, we always talk about, you know, we have a pick board, and, you know, Sid, Sid, Sidney's been the one to get it two years in a row, so... This freshman comes in, and he's winning right now. So we're all trying to one-up him. He has four. I, mean, I think the closest is Sid with two. So, you know, we, we got to catch up to him. Uh, what was the other question? What was your, which one was your favorite? Oh, my favorite pick is probably his pick six, you know, going into the third quarter of the Pac-12 championship. Um, you know, close game. Pick six, and we knew we, we took the crowd away, and we saw all the players' heads go down, and you know that was that was probably the best moment. Okay, over here, AP. Uh, this is for the coach. Uh, coach, what's unique about Alabama's passing game, and then for Buddha, what is the receiver you least li like to guard Alabama's receivers? Yeah, so uh, Alabama, everything starts with a run, and so. They do a good job with that, and then the pass game comes off of that. Play action pass, RPOs. Um, so, you know, everything starts to run, being able to establish that, um, whether it's the quarterback or those running backs. And then they like to take their shots and um, the RPO game. Uh, I, don't, I don't feel like there's a least receiver I, I would want to guard. I mean, we just take it in as a great opportunity. We talk about separations in the preparation. They got tremendous, you know, wide receivers, 3, 13, 11, 88 tight end. Um, they just got, they got great, you know, passing threats. So we just love to watch film and then, you know, get, get ready to go against them. All right, next question. Okay, we'll go here in the middle, row three. Mike friend from this side, right here to your left. Alan Cole, Sports Illustrated Kids. Your defense all season has been focused on getting turnovers and winning that way. What do you guys see on film in Alabama's offense that you think, I guess, helps you the most with the turnovers? Like, what do you think you could get them from? Um, we're always looking at ball security, those type of things, how the, the running backs, receivers um, hold the ball when they run with it. And, um, and we, work, we work a lot um, in the off season, through the, through the season, emphasizing turnovers and it really comes back to these guys um, talking amongst themselves emphasizing amongst themselves and um, and then just going out there and just continually trying to, to, to rip at the ball and the balls in the air make plays on the ball and it's for whatever reason every coach in America does what I'm talking about but this teams gel with gel at it okay right here in the middle of the aisle Buddha, for the last six years, the winner of the Bowl Cup Challenge belt has won the game. Does that mean anything to you that now you guys are ahead? And who stood out last night in hoops and who was the scariest driver the night before? Uh, uh, nah, we don't pay attention to I mean, we think that's a cool event for, you know, the Peach Bowl and everything. But, you know, we, we love to compete in everything. So we would like to win in everything. And your question was on the driving. Um, probably me, you know, uh, my go-kart was slow. I'm blaming it on my go-kart. So I was going slow while everybody else was passing me up and I was trying to, you know, cut them off. So 
people wouldn't pass me up. All right, next question. Where are we going next? Okay, right here, Charles. But there's been a lot written and, and said about the importance of your decision to attend Washington and what that meant for, for other players to, for coming and staying in the state. What did, um, does, do you take special pride in that? And, and can you talk about just seeing, being a, a Seattle guy, seeing the, this program rise to prominence, what it means to you? I mean, I don't want to think that, you know, just me committing made other players want to go to Washington, but, you know, I mean, that's a cool thing. Um, the hometown guys coming to the state of Washington, you know, me trying to recruit those guys and, you know, trying to get them to stay. And I feel like, you know, it's, it's been great. Coach Pete, you know, great recruiter, all these coaches, great recruiters. Um, just, they just be real with the, with the players and, you know, tell them that, you know, if, if you work hard and all that type of stuff, then maybe you'll have a chance to play. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's all about school as well. And, you know, Washington's a great school, so. All right, we've got time for a few more. Where are we going next? Okay, right up here in the third row left, please. Jeff Spiegel, WBMA Birmingham. I want to get both of you guys to comment on uh, the nickname for this defense, Death Row. That's a very impressive nickname. And uh, how much pride do you take in kind of upholding that standard? I will defer to Buddha on that one because uh, that's more of a player-driven uh, uh, deal. Uh, in my freshman year, Shaq, Timu, and all, you know, that class, those guys, they, they made up the name Death Row. And, you know, a lot of those guys are from Cali too, but I don't know if it's from Cali. Keyshawn might have a better, you know, understanding of it. But when I think of it, I think of just, you know, a team that, that's smart, physical, you know, that, that's going to go come after you each play, uh, not, not be, you know, um, stupid with their, their penalties and all that type of stuff, personal fouls. I think of just a smart team that, you know, that's going to come after you each down. So that's, that's what I think. Next question, raise your hand, please. All right, back here in the front. This is for Coach, and then Buddha, if you could respond to this. How do you balance just everything that comes with a big game like this, uh, all the full activities through the, throughout the week, and then, of course, keeping the focus <coughs> on the game, just the mental preparation that goes into a big game like this? Yeah, it's, um, and we obviously we talk about it a lot, and, and uh, with the guys, um, you know, you are, we, we're here for a reason, and it's play a game, but at the same time, we don't want to, uh, um, you know, we want these guys to enjoy it, and so it's a balance of, you know, trying to get these guys, you know, dialed in in the meetings and on the practice field, and when we're not doing football, um, you know, they're, they're enjoying their, their time in Atlanta and, and the events they're doing, and, and um, yeah, it's easier said than done when you got 105 guys. Um, so, um, but these are good kids, and you know, it's it just it's it started, you know, with these guys three years ago. Um, so, you know, everything that we we talk about and and how, how our our culture is in our program, these, these guys have been being prepared for this type of situation um, and handling uh, the distractions that that come with playing college football. Yeah. Um we talk about how this isn't like a vacation, it's, it's a business trip. So, you know, at the end of the day, we're here to play a football game and, you know, all the activities are, are plus. So we have fun during the activities, you know, um, walk around Atlanta. A lot of guys, I haven't been here before. A lot of guys haven't seen it. But at the end of the day, we want to watch film, do all that type of stuff to prepare for the game. We've got time for about two more. Go here in the front corner. For Pete and Buddha, just was curious. I've talked to a number of players and, they, and coaches. They seem to think that the seeds for this season were really sown last year in terms of some of the things that you guys went through. Can you guys talk about what happened last year and why do you feel like the maybe the trials and tribulations that you went through kind of helped kind of form you know what happened this year for you guys? I think um, defensively it started um, after, after um, our first year. Um, we had those, we had a um, bunch of talented guys on defense that, that ended up going to the NFL. And we had a lot of guys coming back that hadn't played a lot. 
And so I think, um, you know, Buddha was a true freshman, and a lot of these guys were, you know, hadn't played, and so it was an opportunity for these guys to show what they could do and, you know, what kind of competitors they are. And um, so um, getting them to, you know, take the coaching and practice hard and, and all the, all the, all the um, things that come with becoming a good football player, um, and a lot of it's between the years, it started there. And then uh, last year, our success on defense, um, you know, the confidence grew. And, and then um, as a team last year, um, we weren't able to finish games uh, that, that we could have won. And so I, I know these guys took that to heart, and that was a, that was a big issue and, um, in the off season, And well, even at the end of last year, you know, um, it was the way we finished. Um, these guys um, could, could feel and understand what, what it took to, to seal the deal, and um, they, they carried it over into the offseason uh, with Coach Saha and the guys and, um, and played one game at a time, and this is where we're at. Yeah, I feel the same as coach. Um, you know, all the losses, you know, nobody likes to lose. All the losses keeps getting to you, and you, you just got to, you know, dig in and just, like, say, I hate to lose and just go on each day, one day at a time. I'm trying to get better. And, you know, all the stuff Coach P preaches, you know, taking each opportunity one at a time, each day one at a time. You know, each lift one at a time when it was summertime, and then, you know, everything else would take care of itself, and that's what we did. All right, time for one more. Is there a final question? All right, back up here to Jeff. Buddha, how big of a step would it be for this program, for this league, to beat the number one team in the nation Saturday? I mean, it would be a, a big step. Um, you know, Alabama's been you know, Alabama for, for years, and it'll, it'll be a big step to win, but you also gotta, we also gotta know and realize, like, there's, there's two more games left, so you beat Alabama, you still got another game to play, so it's not no celebration, you know, pop out the cans of soda and all that type of stuff, like, we got another game to play the next week, so, you know, we'll celebrate that night if we won, and then, you know, the next, the next week we have a game. So, you know, it'll be a great, a great big step, though. They're Alabama, great offense, tremendous defense, special teams, great. Um, you know, no weaknesses. Coach, did you want to address that as well, knocking off the number one team? Uh, yeah, it'd, it'd be, uh, be quite an accomplishment, and it's, it's a big-time challenge. And so, but we would uh, – yeah, that would be that would be a great feeling. But like, echo what Buddha said, um, we would have another one uh, right behind it, so we wouldn't be able to uh, to celebrate that too long. All right, thanks, gentlemen. We'll end it right there. Thank you. Cool. Thank you.